Welcome back, everyone. Well, a dramatic gesture like this one is sometimes all it takes to get your opponent in trouble on the basketball court. Sometimes it's hard to tell, though, what's real and what's not. But with money from Mavericks owner Mark Cuban, a research team in Dallas is doing a scientific study on the difference between fouls and flops. Here's Channel 8's Jason Wheeler. I mean, this is theatrical right here. Watch this. Collapse. There are entire pages of entries on YouTube. And Boozer just throws Ori to the ground. He didn't throw him. Compilation videos of, well, depending on how you look at it, the best or the worst. All right, let's take a look. <laughs> oh, my. Incidences of flopping in the NBA. But that's a flop. God. This again. It just ruins the game. Pro basketball players suspected of embellishing the extent of contact with other players to persuade the ref to blow the whistle. He misses him, but the referee from his angle probably thought that he hit him, okay? Because you can see Fernandez takes his head back. But how can you really tell, even with a replay, when an athlete is in fact faking a foul. Mark Cuban asked us if we were interested in doing it. With more than $100,000 in funding from the Dallas Mavericks owner Mark Cuban, SMU professor Peter Wayand and his team set out nine months ago on a research project dubbed the physics of flopping, blowing the whistle on a foul practice. A whimsical name, but a study that could change the way the game is played, or at least the way it's officiated. We try to have fun doing the science, but, but you're right. I mean, there's a lot. If, if we're successful with it, there's a lot of potential application. It could have a big impact on the outcome of games and possibly even lead to new rules and penalties. So far, here's what they've come up with. We can get three-dimensional position data from wherever we put a reflective marker on a person's body. A player outfitted with special equipment stands on a podium that detects his every movement. Sensors and high-speed cameras rolling, he takes an intentional push as measurements are gathered on how much force he receives. Here's where he started, here's where he ended up. And just as importantly, how much force is given. Which is here in red. This push weighs in at 90 pounds. Yeah, the short answer is yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a real foul. Wayand plans to correlate the data on these charts to characteristics captured on video. If it all works out right, telltale signs of flopping could someday be detected by a computer program and then presented to a referee on a replay. The project will be completed by this summer at about the same time this NBA season comes to an end and a whole new slate of dramatic videos alleging the biggest flops of the year hits YouTube. Hey, you never know if there's a movie agent looking at watching this game right now. Jason Wheeler, Channel 8 News. Mavericks owner Mark Cuban is the most vocal owner in the NBA and flopping is one of his pet peeves. How peeved? He's spent $100,000 so SMU researchers can dive into the science of flopping. Today we got to see that science in action. Lost the ball, picked up by Randolph. If you like basketball, you probably hate flopping. The NBA doesn't like it either and created this video before last season. This first play is an example of a flop that will be penalized. We tried to explain flopping a few months ago when the study was announced. Wheels and Claire are both heading for the nightcap coffee pot at the same time when all of a sudden the two make contact. Wheels is jolted back. He stumbles and falls looking for a little help. That's what a referee should call. However, the level of contact on the play is inconsistent with the grossly embellished fall to the floor. Today, a team of five SME researchers showed us how they're spending Mark Cuban's money. A push bar with four sensors measures force. Motion detectors show the reaction, which is then caught on video and the data recorded. Dr. Peter Wayand is leading the biomechanics study at SMU. This was the second push, which was the, the, the one he resisted more. So the peak force on that second push was about 90 pounds. And probably 
probably a legitimate foul. Maybe someday the study will allow flop-related fouls to be reviewed and calls changed by referees. Dr. Wayne says it's not too far-fetched, but telling the difference between a foul and a fake flop isn't easy. The skill in the art these days, a lot of times it's hard to tell because so many of the players have developed the skill of flopping that it's really difficult to detect. When the study is finished late next summer, SMU will have it peer-reviewed. And oh, by the way, Mark Cuban also gets a copy. I think he wants to use a scientific process and our expertise to get legitimate answers to these questions with the hope that we will be able to provide an applied tool that will protect the integrity of the game because flopping is a threat to that.